Hi there, in this video we're going to look at the click to edit pattern in HTMX using Django as our back end. Now in the last video we looked at the click to load pattern and you can see the results of that on this page here where we can load more data dynamically using HTMX and our Django view will return that to the template for HTMX to swap into the DOM. So now we want to look at the click to edit pattern. And if we look at that page in HTMX's documentation, there's a small demo at the bottom where we can click a button which loads up a form that we can then edit as we want. And then we can submit that and that will persist those changes on our back end. So we're gonna build this with Django and we're gonna use this particular structure here to do that. And we're going to first start by building a detail page for each student. So when you click a student's name, we want to load up a student detail page. So let's get started with that now. To load that page, we need a URL. So we'll go to our urls.py. And I should note that on GitHub, this code is available on this GitHub repository here. The click to load video was the last one. And you can find that in this folder here. If you want to follow along, follow from this particular folder because that already has our models and other things that we're using in the application. So back to VS Code, in the urls.py file, we're gonna copy the student's URL and now we're gonna define a student detail URL. So I'm gonna change the name of this to student-detail and the view that this URL is gonna load is gonna be the student detail view, which we'll create in one second. And the path for this particular URL, it's gonna be students followed by the primary key of the student in the database. So this primary key is a dynamic URL parameter. It's gonna depend on the primary key of the student. So it could be one, it could be two, or it could be 10 million. It could be any number that's valid. So now that we have the URL, let's go and create this student detail view in our views.py file. So below the student list, we're gonna create another function based view here. And this takes the request as an argument as always, but it also takes the primary key from the URL. This is matching what we call this here, PK. So we'll call it PK in the argument as well. And now we can fetch the student by the primary key. Now in this view, we're gonna use a helper function from Django called get object or 404. And this takes a model as its first parameter and it takes the lookup as a second parameter. And the lookup that we're gonna use is we're gonna look for the primary key being equal to the one that's coming in as an argument from the URL. So let's set a variable called student based on this particular function here. And we need to import this function from the django.shortcuts module, the same module that we get the render function from. And we can save that with the import done. And basically, if the student with the given primary key doesn't exist, this will return a 404 not found status code. Otherwise, it will fetch the object from the database and store it within the student variable that we're defining here. So after we've retrieved the student from the database, we can add that to our context. And then we're gonna render a template here. We'll pass the request here. The template's gonna be one called student.html. And to that, we'll pass the context. Now we need to create this student.html template. So within the templates directory, uh, we're we're going to create that file now and this file is going to extend our base.html and within that we're going to define our content block here now within the content block i'm going to add a div with an id of student details and then we'll include another partial here so include core slash partials and the partial is going to be called student details.html and finally in this template i'm going to add a link back to the form page at the bottom just for convenience here this is just an anchor tag with an href equal to our index url so after we've done that we now need to create the student details.html this is a partial that we're going to add here so add that and this is simply going to be responsible for rendering the student's details on the page. And we'll see why we're breaking this into a partial a little bit later on. So in here, we're gonna paste a little bit of code, an h1 tag with the student's name, and then two paragraph tags with the student's subject and their date of birth. So a very simple detail page. And this student variable, remember, is coming from a review. We're setting that within the context here. This is the result of the get object or 404 call. So what we'd like to do now, if we go back to our page, and it's here. If I refresh this, we want to be able to click the name of a student and be taken to their detail view. So to do that, we're gonna go back to the student list.html partial. It's actually just called list.html. And we want to make it so that when we click the name, we can then be taken to the page. So it's this table data here with the student's name. In that, we're gonna enclose an anchor tag with an href. So let me close that off. 
and we'll move this down and format this and then we can write the href. So the href, we're going to use the URL template tag and to this we're going to set it equal to the student detail URL which comes from our urls.py here. That's the name of this one here. Now this URL takes a primary key as an argument here and we can attach that with the URL template tag. So let's see how to do that. After the name of the URL, we can pass any arguments to that URL. So for example, in this case, I want to pass the student's ID. So it'll be student.id and then that will be embedded within the URL and placed here. So we can add these dynamic URL parameters after the name of the URL by simply attaching them like that. And once that's done, we should now be able to click on the URLs within our table here. So if I refresh the page, you see that the names are now clickable and we get taken to a very basic student detail page containing the student's name and the subject they're studying as well as their date of birth. Now obviously this date is fake. Nobody born two weeks ago will be studying web development but this is just for demonstration purposes. And here at the bottom, we have this anchor tag that takes us back to the table as well. So that's why I included that. So now we can navigate between each of these pages and the student detail page will contain the details for the correct student. So the next step in this tutorial, I want to add a button that allows us to edit a student's details. And this is going to be similar to this particular demo here where we click this button here and it loads up a form that we can edit. So we're gonna do that now using our template. This is the student detail template and that's where I want to add the button. So if we go back to Visual Studio Code and we go to the student detail template, below the student details, I'm gonna add a button with some basic bootstrap styling and it's gonna have text saying edit. So now if we refresh this page, we have this rather ugly looking edit button, but we're not gonna focus on the styling here. What we want to do is when we click this button, we want it to load up a form that allows us to edit this particular user. And we want to use HTMX to do this. So if we go back to our button here, I'm gonna add some HTMX attributes, starting with the HX get attribute. And this is gonna define a URL that loads up the form that allows us to edit this student. And I'm gonna call this URL the student edit form. That's what the name we're going to give that URL. And to that, we're gonna attach the student's ID as we did before. So let's add this URL here to our urls.py file. So within URL patterns, we'll add another path. And the path for this one, it's gonna be students slash, and we're gonna attach the primary key as we did in the URL up here, the students detail one. And to that, we're gonna add edit at the end. And that's gonna determine that this endpoint will load up the form that allows us to edit a particular user. And this is going to load up a view called student edit form and we'll add that in one second. And finally, we'll give it the name that we gave it here in our student details template so that that all links up nicely. So the next step is to create this view that will return the form for HTMX to swap into the DOM. So let's go to our views.py file and we're gonna copy the student detail view and I'm gonna paste that in because this is gonna be quite similar, at least some of it. And we're gonna name this student edit form. And that corresponds to this particular view here. So the first step, we're gonna get the student um, and we're going to use the get object or 404 to do that and we're going to add that student to our context and because we're returning a form that we want to then use to edit the student we're going to need to create a Django form instance so let's go to our forms.py file and we're going to create a model form within this file it's going to be called student form and it'll inherit from the forms.model form. And we now need to import the model that we're gonna use, which is the student model from our models.py file. And then within the model form, we simply define a meta. This is an inner class that we use to define the model here that we're gonna link the form to, and that's gonna be the student model. And the fields that we're gonna use are gonna be the name field, the subject field, and the date of birth field as well. So all three fields on our model are gonna be linked here in this model form. So now when we render this form, it's gonna have all of those fields. So let's now go back to our view. Now let's import the form that we've just created at the top, the student form, and we're gonna instantiate that here within the student edit form view. So create a variable called form and we'll make it equal to the student form. And to that we pass an attribute called instance and we set that equal to the student that we've retrieved on the line above here on line 30. So basically that will take the student model that we get on line 30 and it will fill out the student forms fields based on what the student already has. And we're gonna see what this looks like in a second when we render that form. But let's now add the form to our context as another key. So form will be equal to the form on line 31. And the final change that we're going to make is we're gonna change the template that we're rendering here. So let's change that to this template here. 
It's called editstudentform.html and this is a partial that we're going to create right now. So in the partials directory, let's create this HTML file and we're going to create a very basic Django form in this template. So let's create a form element here and in there we're going to add our CSRF token. And in a second, I'm going to attach HTMX attributes to this form, but for now, we're going to leave it off. And finally, we'll render the form very simply as paragraph tags. This is not going to look great, but it will do the job. And then we can also add a submit button below that. Now, let's see how this looks like on the page. If we refresh and hit the edit button, we get this rather ugly form below. Let's now change the target to which this student edit form view is going to return its content to. So this view returns a form which is then rendered by the edit student form template. If we look at the button that actually submits the HTMX request, that's contained in the student details.html. And this is a get request and the content will be returned and rendered into the DOM. Now we want to set an HX target here to make sure it's rendered into the correct place and the target we want to set we want to replace uh, the entire page if we look at this page containing the students details so let's go back to our student.html and we can see here that the include of this partial with the details is surrounded by this ID here so I'm going to copy that ID and we're going to use that as our HX target so back in the student details let's attach that ID to our HX target attribute and save that file so let's see how that looks now if we go back to the page we hit edit we now have a form that actually looks better. It replaces the correct content and is swapped into the right place in the document. Now, if we submit this form, nothing is going to happen because we haven't set up any form processing on the back end. So if I submit that, it will remain Morty. It's not going to change the name of the student. So what we now need to do is go back to VS Code and we're going to go to the edit student form HTML template here. And to the form element, we're going to add an HX put attribute. And it's a put attribute because we're updating and changing an existing resource. So we're going to use a put request to do that. And we'll set that equal to the URL template tag. And it's going to go to the student detail URL. And we can attach the student's primary key to that URL. We need the, the primary key within that URL in order to render the correct page. And we have access to the student here because in our view, we're attaching that as the context. We get it on line 30 here with the get object or 404 call. And finally, we're going to set the HX target target here as well. HX target is going to be equal to the same one that we set in the button here, the student details ID. So let's copy that and set that within the HX target attribute here. Now because we need to add the CSRF token to the request, we're going to have to add a bit of code here and I'm going to do that in the base.html right at the bottom below the container we can add this script tag and I'll link to where I get this code in the description. But basically this attaches the header that Django expects for the CSRF token and that'll allow HTMX to send the put request and it will not be rejected on the Django server because we have attached the token that we need in that request. And this is done by basically listening to the HTMX config request event and then adding that header here on line 29. So once that's done, we can close off the base.html file. And the final step in this tutorial is that we need to handle the put request in the student detail view. Now we've specified in the form here that this is going to the student detail view. So when we submit the form, HTMX will handle submitting that and we'll send it to that view. So let's edit that view now. Currently we're rendering the student.html template. So we're only going to do that if the request.method is equal to get, uh, then we can render that student.html template. Otherwise, if the request.method is a put request, let's make it equal to put, then what we're going to do now is we're going to actually get the data from that request. And to do that, we can use Django's query dictionary. And to that, we pass the request body containing the key value pairs from the form. So we pass that and then convert it to a normal Python dictionary. And we also need to import the query dictionary. So let's do that at the top. And that's going to be from Django.http import query dict. Now this query dictionary, let's go to Django's documentation and you can find it on the request and response objects page. Now the request object in Django, it has these get and post attributes. These are instances of the query dictionary. And this is a dictionary like class that's customized to deal with multiple values of the same key. Now for a put request, we don't have access to get and post attributes. There's nothing in those query dictionaries when we're sending a put request. So to convert that to a dictionary, we send the request body in to the query dict constructor. And then that 
query dictionary has a dot dict method which will convert it to a regular Python dictionary. So I'm going to do a couple of print statements so we can see exactly what this looks like. So we'll print out the request body and we'll also print out the data which we get here in line 31 after converting from a query dictionary to a normal Python dictionary. So to show what these look like, let's go back to our page here and we'll refresh. And when we edit and submit that, we will then be able to see on the terminal uh, before the error message that we get these here. Firstly, we have the request.body, which we get here on line 32 in print. And you can see that this is prefixed with B, which means it's a bytes object and it contains these key value pairs containing our data. So we have the CSRF middleware token, we have the name field, and so on. We convert that to a dictionary on line 31 using the query dict constructor, and then once we've converted that to a normal Python dictionary, you can see what we get printed out here. It's normal key value pairs rather than this bytes object here. So this is a better way of working with the data as a normal Python dictionary. And that's why we have this line 31 here. So once we have the dictionary, what we're going to do is then we're going to instantiate the form. So we'll say form is equal to the student form. And to that, we'll pass the data. And we can also pass the instance of student in there as well. So we pass the data that we've extracted from the put request that HTMX is sending and then we put in the instance as well which is equal to the student that we get on line 26. We can then check if the form is valid and if it is valid we can then process that form by calling the form.save method and this will save the instance of the student to the database with the changed data and if we successfully save that we want to basically re-render the details page so if I refresh this page this is the details page when we edit and save, we want to be redirected back to the details page. So to do that, let's return the render call and we'll pass the request into that as well as the student detail template. And that is a partial, so it's going to be core partials student dash detail dot html. And finally, we can attach the context as well to that render call. Now, if the form is not valid, we'll go to line 36 and we're going to add the form to our context with this statement here. So we have the form that's been instantiated with the data on line 32. If there are any errors, we will have them within that form. So let's add it to our context and then we will re-render the form page. So we're going to render the edit form again so we can copy this line here. This is from the student edit form view and this renders this edit student form template. So let's add that here and then save that. And this should be hopefully enough to do our put request processing. So if we refresh this page and we edit Morty with some random data, when we hit submit, we're getting an error. So let's investigate that error. And the error you can see here is the template does not exist. And that's because the template that I should be returning is called studentdetails.html. So let's save that again and refresh. And you can see that the name has updated. So if we change that back to Morty and we change this to machine learning. We should now see that Morty updates and this is done dynamically with HTMX. The put request is handled by Django and the returned HTML is swapped into the DOM with the new changes by HTMX. And if we go back to the students page, we should see that this is reflected in the table. We can still load more data using the click to load pattern from the last video, and we can change the data for other students as well, as you can see here. So now we have click to edit working, we're using Django and HTMX to do this and dynamically change data using forms that are generated on the back end. That's all for this video. Thank you for watching. In the last couple of videos, we've demonstrated the click to load and the click to edit patterns. If anyone has any other suggestions, just leave them in the comments. And if you've enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe to the channel. Thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next video.